Okay, we should be rolling um, if everything is working properly. Um, if you're here in the waiting room, welcome. Uh, my name is Ian Freed. I'm a curriculum developer here at uh, Code Academy. Uh, and today we are going to be doing uh, a live stream here right from our uh, Code Academy HQ. And we're going to be doing a song lyric topic analysis. Uh, should be a really great time. Uh, this is an area that I feel really passionately about. It combines two of my favorite interests, uh, music and data science. Uh, so really excited to be here. I hope you are all as well. Um, and we'll also uh, be having uh, my colleague Alex helping us out today. You might see him in the chat if you're in there. Um, and also feel free to jump into the chat. We want this to be as much of an interactive experience as possible. Uh, try and make it uh, back and forth. Uh, I don't want to just be talking at you guys this entire time, so I'll be looking at the chat too uh, and try and make this as uh, engaging a session as we can. Um, so as we'll let people kind of continue to roll in a little bit um, and uh, we'll go ahead and get started in the analysis in just a second. Um, once again, if you're just coming in now, my name is Ian Freed, curriculum developer here at Code Academy, uh, and today we're going to be doing a uh, song lyric topic analysis. Uh, so using some of our music uh, interests and then also using some of our uh, coding and data science knowledge. Um, hello there, everyone who's joining. Um, once again, feel free to engage in the chat. We really want to hear what you have to say, um, ask any questions that you might have, um, and make this uh, as much of a, a two-way conversation as we can. Um, so, okay, I think we're good to go ahead um, and uh, get going. Um, so what, what really are we doing today? Um, so I have this love for music. Um, you know, music is, is, is a great aspect in my life. It brings me joy, it brings me happiness. Uh, and I wanted to find a way to do a cool analysis on music. Um, and I was also really interested in natural language processing. This is an area of uh, data science that involves looking at uh, language and seeing what sorts of insights we're able to find um, in, in such language. Uh, and looking at song lyrics kind of became like a natural progression uh, given my interests. Uh, so I wanted to look at the song lyrics of an artist and see um, if there is some deeper meaning or insight that I could find. Uh, and one way we can do this is with what is called a topic model. Um, and I'm going to show this to you on the screen right here. Um, and basically, a topic model uh, is a way for us to look at the uh, song lyrics, um, or it could be any text, but in our case, song lyrics, um, and seeing if we can find a certain topic that appears um, in the individual songs of an artist. And then we can also look at how those topics are maybe changing over time. Uh, so what we'll be working towards today is coming up with what these topics are for a certain artist. Uh, so seeing what are the different maybe themes that they're talking about or the topics that are of interest to them. Um, and then we're going to look at how those topics um, in the songs of the artist have changed throughout their artistic progression. Uh, so maybe at the beginning of the artist's career, they were talking about, let's say, love. And then towards the end of their career, maybe they're jaded by all their relationships. And now they're just talking about themselves there and being on their own and being independent. Um, and so we'll create a graph like this, where we can see how often certain topics appear in the music of an artist uh, in each different year. Um, and this really gives us a cool insight into maybe like reaffirming what we know about an artist already um, or uh, learning something new about an artist we maybe don't know about. Um, and I see someone's asking a question about um, like installation, kind of setup. Um, so yeah, Anaconda, Miniconda, they're both uh, really great um, Python distributions that are useful for data science, for making sure you have all the tools that you need, all the packages that you might need in Python. Um, both work. Miniconda is a smaller download uh, that will take up less space on your computer. You might have to manually install uh, some more of those specific packages uh, yourself, though. Um, so to go ahead and get started, hopefully you have already um, installed Miniconda or Anaconda on your computer. Um, if not, you can uh, look at the instructions on the bottom of the YouTube um, link in that description. Um, and there's an article where we'll explain how you can go ahead and do that and install the proper uh, packages. 
Um, so what you will do once you have that downloaded, um, you'll also want to go ahead and download a, a data set of song lyrics. So we have provided um, a few data sets available to you. Um, this is music from a few artists. Uh, the lyrics of these artists don't represent any of our opinions or our beliefs. This is just the artist's um, you know, thoughts and ideas. Um, and so we're just providing those to you for analysis. Um, I'll be working with the Taylor Swift uh, data set today. Um, I can say I was always the hugest Taylor Swift fan, uh, but my sister is a huge fan and uh, my boss, Laura, here at Code Academy, huge fan. Uh, so I guess they just were both rubbing off on me and I came across this Taylor Swift data set and thought, hey, this is cool to work with. Um, and she's always in the news too. So um, I'll be doing that analysis. Um, in addition, we've also provided a uh, link to a huge uh, song lyric data set um, with over 380,000 songs from many artists. You can go ahead and uh, look for an artist in that data set that appeals to you. Um, so once you've gone ahead and gotten that data, you'll want to go ahead and open up the terminal on your computer. Um, and you'll want to type in Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter Notebook is where we'll be doing our analysis today. Um, and if you just type in Jupyter uh, in the terminal, and I'll try and zoom in there, um, and click Enter, um, it will open up Jupyter in uh, your uh, internet browser. Um, and basically, Jupyter is just a great interface for interacting uh, with uh, your code. Um, it provides a, a visual means to see what's happening as you execute uh, code line by line. Um, and so if you're learning or you're exploring um, you know, your data um, or you want to create visualizations, it can be a really useful tool. And also for sharing your code with others, it can be really helpful. Uh, so when we open up Jupyter Notebook, um, it will bring us to this directory um, in our browser. Uh, and I'm just going to navigate to the folder where I've stored uh, the data that we're going to be working with. So I have it in a folder called Lyrics, and I can just click through here. Um, and we can see I have uh, this Taylor Swift lyrics.csv. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little more. Hopefully, everyone can see. Um, and this is the CSV file that contains uh, all of the lyrics we're going to be working with. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new uh, file here uh, that we'll be working with. So I'll just go to the top right and click New. Um, and I'm going to click Python 3 file to create that new Python 3 file. And this is where we'll be doing our code today. Um, OK, great. Um, so to go ahead and open up the CSV file with the song lyrics, we're going to go ahead and use the pandas package. Uh, pandas is a really great uh, tool and, or package in Python that allows us to uh, manipulate our data, do a lot of data cleaning, and just organize it in an easy to view manner. Um, so we'll import pandas as pd, which is the common notation. Uh, and we'll go ahead and store our CSV in what's known as a data frame. It's the main structure for storing data in pandas. And I'll say, let's read our CSV. And I'm going to feed this read CSV uh, method of pandas the file name that we're working with. So we want to uh, um, upload our Taylor Swift lyrics.csv. And I'm going to go ahead and to run a cell in Pandas, uh, or sorry, in Jupyter Notebook, you can just click Shift and Enter, and that'll run that cell. And whoops, I'm getting this error here. Um, see, Unicode decode error. Um, uh, looks like uh, Jupyter um, or is having some trouble reading uh, this data, or Pandas. Pandas is having trouble reading this data with this Unicode decode error. And we see UTF-8. So UTF-8 is a really standard encoding um, for, for when we're working with files and we're converting between like ASCII characters and making sure we can read this data. Don't have to worry about the details of it. But basically, we need to change the encoding that we have in our um, read CSV function. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and add a keyword argument called encoding uh, to this method right here. And I'm going to make the encoding Latin 1. And Latin 1 is another popular uh, encoding um, that exists. There's many out there, um, but this is another really popular one. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a shot, and this should let us read in our data correctly. Um, and great, the cell ran. Uh, and now we'll go ahead and inspect our data frame to see what we have. So I'm going to say uh, data frame .head. And what .head will do is it will show the first five rows of the data frame that you're working with. 
Uh, and this lets us uh, see what the, is in store with this data, um, have an idea of what we're working with, and then we can start thinking um, about what we want to do with the data if we haven't already decided. Um, so we can see that we have a few different columns here in our data frame. Um, one is the artist, which is Taylor Swift, we can see. The other is the album. Um, we also see Taylor Swift. Um, it might be a little confusing here, but this is because Taylor's first album uh, was named after herself, eponymously titled Taylor Swift. Um, so we have the album title in that second column. Then we have the track title in the third column, and we're looking at a song named Tim McGraw. Um, we can see also that we have a lyric and line numbers as their own columns. And the way this data set is split up is that instead of having all the lyrics for each individual song in a row, uh, each row in our data frame is representing one line of lyric. Um, so what we will want to do is we want to start thinking about how are we going to take these lines of lyrics and bring them up into a level um, that's easier for us to analyze on. Because um, doing kind of a line by line basis with lyrics, it might be hard in order to get some insights. Uh, but if we kind of group things up towards an individual song level, we'll be able to do a, a better analysis that might make uh, some more sense. Um, so let's go ahead and get started on trying to organize that data into a better way. Um, so one way we can do that is by using the pandas group by uh, method. And this is a really powerful uh, method that enables us to um, group things together into uh, like higher level data that will be better for our analysis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, a new data frame called songs. And it's going to be equal to, um, we're going to say, take our original data frame, df, and we're going to group by. And I have to choose what we're going to group by. And since we want to aggregate things up to this track level, um, I want to uh, group by the track title. And what this will do, it will enable us to combine all the lyrics for an individual song together into one line of data. So we're going to group by that track title. Um, and what we're doing when we do that uh, group by, we're combining every single row here that's going to have, let's say, Tim McGraw as the track title together. Um, but we need to provide some sort of function to Pandas to let it know that, hey, OK, we're going to combine every single song with the name Tim McGraw. Um, but what are we going to do to the lyrics? We don't want to just you know, take all the lyrics and, and, and combine them into one um, like average. We need to string them all together into one big block of lyric that's going to represent the song that we're working with. Um, and so we need to provide what's called like an aggregate function. We're going to aggregate our data together. Uh, so in pandas, we can do this by using the ag method. So I'm just going to string that on to the end of my group by with dot .agg. Um, and what I want to do is aggregate um, on two different columns. I want to aggregate on our lyrics so we can combine all the lyrics together. And I also still want to keep the year of the song, uh, just because that year is going to enable us to do that analysis over time. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a dictionary here, a uh, Python dictionary. And I'm going to give this Python dictionary two keys. The first key is going to be the lyric column. And the next key is going to be the year column. And the lyric column, for the value I'm going to, or sorry, for the lyric key, I'm going to give a value of what I want to do to all of that lyric data. Um, and I'm going to put in here a lambda function. A lambda function uh, in Python um, also is known as an anonymous function. And it's essentially a function that we don't have a name for. So we're not just defining this function uh, with a name. Um, we're just making it just for this one instance. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take an empty space, and I'm going to join um, x. Now, what, what is going on here? So basically, the x in our lambda function is representing each um, is representing a list of all the different lines of lyric for a track title. So let's take a step back and think about this. We have this uh, track title, Tim McGraw. And I see we have these uh, five lines of lyric here. The first one, and I'm not going to sing it because my voice isn't the greatest, but he said the way my blue eyes shined. Um, so this is one line of lyric. And then underneath that, we have put those Georgia stars to shame that night. 
So we're going to have maybe um, 150 lines of lyric for each song. And when we group by, we're putting all of those lyrics into a list, which is represented by this X right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the dot join method, which will take each individual line of lyric and join them together with a space in between. Um, and so what that will do is we'll string all those lyrics into one block of lyric. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm blocking my lambda function <laughs> with my body. OK. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll up, um, and I'm going to add a few more cells. Um, I apologize for that. And now you should be able to see uh, what's going on. And I'll make sure to try and keep the code on the top of the screen. Um, thanks for pointing that out, uh, Ali. Um, OK, great. Um, so um, that Lambda function for us uh, is going to, once again, combine um, all of those individual lines of lyric into one big block. And we're going to see what that looks like in just a second. Um, before we go ahead and look at that, we also need to do something to the year. Um, and this is a little, a little tricky here. But basically, the year for all, um, for all the rows of the same song is going to be the same. So right, if we look back up here um, at our uh, data frame, the year is 2006 for every song with the name Tim McGraw. Um, and we need to put in some sort of aggregating function in here. So I'm just going to put the mean um, in quotes. And this will essentially take the mean of that same year, 2006, um, for every single row of the Tim McGraw song. So it's just going to essentially return the year of our song. Um, and we'll see what that looks like in just a second. Um, one more thing I'm going to do on this line of code, I know it's kind of long, um, is I'm going to add a uh, dot reset uh, index. And that's just going to go ahead and um, make it so that we are resetting the index of our data frame so we're able to go ahead and easily uh, select all the columns um, uh, when we're moving forward. So I'm going to go ahead and run this cell. And now let's look at songs.head. Um, and hopefully I'm not blocking <laughs> uh, anything. I uh, also want to make sure you guys can see some of the previous code. Um, and here we can see now that uh, we have um, track title, and each track title or each row in this data frame is one song. So Ready For It is one song. Then we have 22, the very famous Taylor Swift song. Um, even if you're not a fan, you probably know it. Um, and then we have a uh, column that's lyric, which is the lyrics for that song. And then we have a column year. Um, and now, just so we can get some more information about this, I'm going to quickly look at the length of songs. And we see we have 94 uh, songs here. Um, and there's one more thing I want to do is you can see that in this lyric column, we can't really see all of the lyrics. Uh, a lot of them are blocked. Um, and so I'm going to need to change one of the options uh, in my pandas data frame. So I'm going to add one more cell up above here. And I'm going to say pd.options.display.max. And I believe it's column width. And if you tab uh, in Jupyter, it'll often bring up um, different uh, available options to you. And I'm going to select max column width. Um, and this option will basically let us say, how many characters can we show um, in an individual column in our data frame? I'm just going to set it to 5,000. These are like songs. They're kind of long. Um, so by doing this, um, we're saying we want more characters available. And I'm going to go ahead and run this cell above again or below. And now we can see that we have that entire block of text for a song and lyric. So we can see, um, as we're kind of working with our data, OK, Ready For It contains this entire set of lyrics. Uh, 22 contains this entire set of lyrics. Um, so um, OK, Jolene is asking, can you use any other artists, or is it just Taylor Swift? Um, and uh, Jangolin is asking, how did you insert the extra line above? So to insert the extra line above, um, what you do is you just click on the left um, side of the cell, and you click A on your keyboard, and that'll insert a line above. If you click B, that will insert a line below. Um, and Jolene, so if you are using um, the uh, uh, data from um, Metro Lyrics, that 380,000 um, song data set, 
What you can do is um, very, very similar to what we're doing. But basically, you'll take, you'll import a data frame with um, the file name that we're that you have for the data. Um, and let's say your data frame is df. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to, let's say you have a specific artist that you want. So I'll say artist. And you'll take the data frame df with all your music. Um, and you're going to access just the specific artist that you want. So um, inside of that uh, data frame um, accessor, which you use with the uh, brackets, uh, you'll say df again. And I believe in that table um, from Metro Lyrics, it's artist is the name of the column for the different artists. And you'll say artist equal to, and then you'll put the artist name that you want. Um, and what this will do, um, it's saying, go ahead and in this data frame, just grab uh, the rows where the artist is equal to the artist name that I'm interested in. Um, and that will grab all of those songs for uh, the artists that you are interested in analyzing. Um, and at that point, you'll have exactly the same kind of data frame that we have here for Taylor Swift. Um, same thing with the uh, other uh, data set that we have on there. You could just go ahead and open up that um, CSV file, and it'll look exactly like this. You won't even have to aggregate the song lyrics from a line by line basis up to the song level. It will already be in that um, uh, full song lyric per each song uh, state. Um, so great question. If you're um, you know, not as um, uh, you know, comfortable with programming, newer to the game, it's totally OK. I'd recommend following along with um, the Taylor Swift analysis for today. And then maybe you can tackle some of your other favorite artists in the future. Um, and we'll be providing this code uh, to you as well so you can follow up afterwards and maybe do another analysis uh, on your favorite artist. Um, cool. Um, OK. Now um, let's go ahead. And now that we have um, our song lyrics, how are we going to do our analysis? Um, so I'm going to jump over uh, to uh, my slides for a little to talk a little bit about how we can do this topic analysis uh, in Python. Um, and what we have is when we have all this uh, piece of lyric or this text, um, text data, we can't do any analysis on it unless we come up with a way to come up with some sort of numerical representation of, of the text. Um, computers only really work well with numbers. They're not as good with things that are, are more ambiguous. So we have to find a way to map our text data to some sort of numerical system. Um, and one way we can do this uh, very easily and uh, very commonly in natural language processing is called bag of words. I mean, the way bag of words works is um, if you input a sentence into a bag of words, we essentially tear that sentence apart and we count how often um, each word occurs in that sentence. Uh, so I'm going to try and move out of the way so we can see this full sentence here. Um, but if we put into um, our bag of words the sentence, I went to the library to check out a book, the book I wanted wasn't available. First of all, this is a very sad thing that happens. Um, I hope it doesn't happen to you. Um, you know, hope your library has all the books you want. Um, but it does happen every now and then. Um, and when we put this sentence into our bag of words, um, oh, I'm leaning the wrong way. <laughs> um, when we put the sentence into the bag of words, um, it will count how often each word occurs. So the uh, word I, or letter I, um, appears twice, went appears once, Two appears twice, um, library appears once, book appears twice. You see the pattern. Um, and so this enables us to codify um, our text data into some sort of numerical mapping. And this works pretty well, uh, but uh, researchers have come up with um, another method that seems to work even better when we're trying to come up with an idea of how important, let's say, certain words are to a piece of text. Um, and this other um, method of doing this is called TF-IDF, or Term Frequency Inverse Document Frequency. Um, and uh, TF-IDF um, is very similar to bag of words. Um, the term frequency part is the bag of words. It's basically saying, how often does this word occur? So it's exactly what we did in that bag of words. Um, the inverse document frequency part, um, what this does is it tags on a penalty to a word based on how often it appears overall in in the giant corpus of words. 
So for, let's think about our song lyric uh, scenario. The term frequency um, for each song is going to be how often does each word in that song appear in that song. Um, so it's just like that bag of words. How often in a single song does each word appear? The inverse document frequency, what this part does is it says, OK, let's look at the entire catalog of songs that this artist has. Let's look at every single one of the 94 songs that Taylor Swift has. And let's see how often each of those words appears again. And if a word appears really frequently in uh, that entire catalog of music, we're going to penalize it. We're going to say this word is probably less important to understanding what's going on in an individual song if it's in every song. So it kind of makes sense, right? If you say something a lot, if you use a word a lot um, in your normal talking, in your normal language, in your normal writing, maybe it's not going to have as much insight into what's going on in an individual you know, like day of your life or an individual entry in your journal. The words that maybe appear every now and then, um, they kind of represent a theme. Those words that pop up um, once every, every few songs for an artist, um, those words are showing that there's some theme that's continuing in this artist's life, perhaps. Um, it's not there all the time, but it's popping up sometimes. Uh, so this TF-IDF kind of finds this balance for us in finding words and how common they are, and how infrequent they are, and how important they are. So it's really useful for us. Um, there's some math that goes on here in the background. If you're interested in it, feel free to look it up. It's pretty cool. I like math a lot. But if you're not into math, you don't need to worry about it. Just know that it's finding a way for us to assign a score to a word on how frequently it occurs um, in an individual song, as well as in the entire corpus of uh, the artist's um, catalog. And I know I'm saying that word corpus. I don't know if I explained it. But in uh, natural language processing, in data science, it's a pretty common word uh, to describe the entire body of text that is being analyzed. Uh, so corpus will just mean you know, every single song in Taylor Swift's catalog in our instance. Um, OK, um, so now that we have that understanding of uh, TF-IDF, let's go ahead and implement it on our uh, song lyric data. And to do this, we're going to use um, a really useful package in Python called sklearn. And I'll actually leave that line there um, for anyone who needs it. Um, and so I'm going to go from sklearn.featureextraction.text. We're going to import tfidf vectorizer. Great. Um, and once we've imported that, I'm going to create a uh, vectorizer object which is um, going to be created just like this. So I'll name it vectorizer, and I'll say tfidf vectorizer. And we're going to provide uh, two um, keyword arguments to our tfidf vectorizer. Um, one is gonna, going to be called stop words. Um, and I see uh, Jangolin is saying, asking, is sklearn different from scikit-learn? Um, they are um, exactly the same thing. Um, so when you're installing um, through Conda, you'll want to write scikit-learn out. Um, but um, when working with the package, you can import it just as sklearn. Um, great question. Um, cool. Um, OK, and so um, going back to our vectorizer, we have one argument, which is stop words, and another one, which is going to be min df. Um, so what are these two um, keyword arguments that we're adding? Um, so if we go back to take a look at our um, bag of words, ooh, whoops. Go back into here. <laughs> oh, my bad. Minor technical difficulties. Um, so we go back to our bag of words, and we look at this sentence. I went to the library to check out a book. Um, we can see that there's some words here that are, we feel are more important. Library, book, um, they stand out. Um, they have some sort of meaning to them that is um, more explicit than maybe words like to or the. Um, and these words like to or the or I even, um, they might not add a lot of depth to our analysis. And in natural language processing, we call these stop words. 
Uh, these are words that might not have a lot of meaning in any context, uh, and they don't add to, to our understanding of what is currently going on or in that piece of text. Um, so we want to remove those words from our text so we're not uh, spending time uh, analyzing them and not having them take away from um, our analysis. Uh, and uh, thankfully, we don't have to go ahead and think of all these stop words. Um, ha these have been thought out uh, by uh, researchers um, and provided to us uh, really easily. And so we can go ahead and grab those stop words from another really useful uh, Python package that I'm going to import right now called NLTK. Um, NLTK is the natural language toolkit. Um, and from NLTK, I'm going to import um, corpus. Um, or uh, from NLTK corpus, I'm going to import stop words. And what that's going to be is that's just going to be all these stop words that we're going to want to remove from our text data. Um, so to go ahead and grab those stop words, I'm just going to say stop words is equal to stop words dot words. And I'm going to put English in here. And so NLTK does actually um, account for stop words in a variety of languages. I believe it's 11, um, which is pretty cool. Um, natural language processing uh, occurs in not just the English language. Um, it involves in, uh, lots of other languages, uh, growing in many of those other languages. Uh, so if you are interested in trying to do this analysis on uh, lyrics from music not from English, uh, you should be able to go ahead and do that, which is uh, pretty cool. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and run that cell. Um, ooh, and it says stop word is not defined. OK, I forgot an S here in stop words. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. Let's see, um, has no word words. Stop words dot words of English. Trying to troubleshoot myself here. Um, oh, OK, stop words dot words. I forgot two S's. Uh, so we'll go ahead and run that. Um, and great. Um, and when you go ahead and run that last cell, if you're seeing some sort of other issue there, um, you might want to go ahead and try running this other cell where we download the stop word data. Um, when you install NLTK, it doesn't always uh, download every single uh, piece of text data that's in that entire package. So to do that, you would say NLTK.download, um, and you say download stop words. And if you run that cell, um, I'm getting a confirmation that I have that downloaded. Um, uh, but for you, it might just download that data. Uh, so I want to go ahead and plug those stop words now into uh, my um, keyword argument there. Um, and then lastly, we have this min document frequency. And this basically um, is asking us, is there a certain uh, number of songs that a word should appear in in order for us to include it? Um, so this involves some experimentation. Uh, natural language processing is often an art more so, more so than a science. Um, and so just based on some of my experience that I have with working with this kind of data, um, I'm going to say 0.1 or 10% of songs. So we want any word that we're going to be working with uh, to appear in at least 10% of songs. Um, and so I see someone saying they got a lookup error when using stopwords.words. Um, that might be occurring because you don't have the um, stop words downloaded. So I would say try running the NLTK.download stop words, um, and that should help you grab those uh, words. Um, seeing if there's any other questions that people are running into, uh, thank you, uh, Lolly Lollix, for pointing out that I wrote word um, instead of words. Um, appreciate all the help I can get when debugging. Debugging happens all the time in coding. It's rare that your code is ever perfect. It's never perfect. There's always going to be issues. So uh, thank you for the help there. Um, cool. Um, OK. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and run this vectorizer cell. Um, and I've created this um, uh, TFIDF vectorizer. And I need to go ahead now and apply it to my uh, actual song lyric data. So I'm going to uh, just name this TFIDF. And I'm going to set it equal to vectorizer dot fit transform. And I'm going to call it on my songs of lyric. And so when we fit transform this vectorizer onto our song lyrics, 
what it's doing is it's going through each and every song and it's saying, okay, let's get those um, counts of how often each word is appearing in that song. And let's also look at that document frequency. How often is that word appearing in all the songs in uh, the catalog of music? And we're coming up with these scores um, of um, you know, how important, let's say, a word is to a song. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. Um, and we've now gone ahead and fit transform, done that um, calculation of TF-IDF on every single song that we have. Um, and uh, we now have uh, those numbers to work with. So how do we take these, these scores, essentially, of how important a word is uh, to the song um, and in the overall catalog and convert that into that um, topic model that we saw here? How do we come up with these topics, essentially? Right? We have these individual words. But how do they group together to a topic? And a topic here is just a collection of words. It's going to be, let's say, 10, 20 words that all combine up to some general theme that we're seeing. Um, and I came up with these themes here, as we can see in this graph. But how do we, how do we combine those words that come together to form a topic? Um, and the way that we can do this um, is with what's called a topic model. Um, and there's a few different techniques to do topic modeling. Um, one really popular one um, is known as LDA. Um, I would try and pronounce um, how to actually say what LDA stands for. Um, I think it's like Lehnstein, Dirschle allocation. I butchered it there. That's why I didn't want to say it. Uh, but it goes by LDA. Um, so that's one really popular um, um, way to do topic modeling. Another one is called non-negative matrix factorization, or NMF. Don't get scared by the names. They do some awesome math underneath the hood that we don't have to worry about. If you are interested, I highly recommend you go read about them. They're pretty fascinating. Um, but I'm just going to talk a little bit about what they actually give us. And what they give us is uh, this chart right here. Um, and in this chart, we can see along the left-hand side, uh, we have documents. And each of these documents are essentially the songs of our catalog. Um, so we'd have 94 rows for the Taylor Swift data set. If you're working with another data set, you'll have as many songs um, in the catalog of your artist. And then along the um, columns, we have the topics. Um, and these topics are groupings of words that our, our uh, topic model is going to find for us. Um, and, and they group these words together, and we come up with this score. Um, and this score represents um, basically how much of this topic is in that document. Um, and so we can say, OK, let's look at document one. Document one has, ignoring that five that is floating there <laughs> for some reason, um, we have that score of 0 0.6 for topic one. Um, and so that's a pretty high uh, score there, just letting us know that uh, that topic one is really prevalent in that first uh, document. Um, there's zero score for topic uh, two, so there's no, no um, prevalence of that topic in document one. Um, and then topic four, we see a 0.2 score. So it's somewhat in there, um, way more than topic two or three, where we have a score of zero, um, but less than topic one. Um, and what our NMF, which we're going to be using, will do for us is come up with these different topics. It'll find those words for us that will make up those topics, and it'll find these scores. And it's really amazing how it does this. It's really awesome. Once again, the math is kind of out of this world. But we don't have to worry about that too much here. Um, but this will be really useful for us um, in figuring out how prevalent each of these topics are in our songs and allowing us to see how these topics appear over time in our artist catalog. Um, so um, what we're going to do is let's go ahead and uh, create this uh, NMF, um, this non-negative matrix factorization. Let's use this algorithm on our song lyric data. Um, so I'm going to import NMF from scikit-learn. So I'm going to say from sklearn.decomposition. Um, decomposition, position. And if you are a math person watching, um, this is a like um, a matrix decomposition that is occurring in NMF, which is why it's stored in sklearn's decomposition um, module. So I'll say from sklearn.decomposition, import NMF. Um, so we have that imported. 
and we'll go ahead and create an NMF object. I'm going to say NMF, I'm going to name it lowercase NMF, so I'll say NMF. Um, and we do need to provide um, one argument to um, our NMF um, uh, uh, creation object, um, which is going to be end components. Now, what is the end components? The end components are going to be how many topics we have in our um, topic model. Uh, so in this chart here, I have six um, topics. Um, I think the last topic is a little bit uh, cut off, um, or the last two. Um, or I might have only five here. I take that back. Um, for our uh, topic model today, we're going to go ahead and choose six topics. You might be asking, how many topics is best, right? Um, once again, I'm going to say it depends. Um, topic modeling is an art, um, and it requires lots of experimentation, running your model, seeing how it works, going back, making changes. Um, so, so it could be 10 topics. Um, it could be uh, you know, five topics. Um, there's no right answer. Um, so for today, we're just going to go ahead with uh, the choice of six topics. Um, so I'll say n components is equal to six. Um, and we'll go ahead and let's go now and fit um, this uh, onto our um, TF-IDF. So the TF-IDF, once again, has all of those scores of how important words are for each song. Um, and we're going to um, fit our NMF on um, fit and transform that on our uh, TF-IDF. So we'll go ahead and I'm going to name this um, just topic, val um, topic values because it's going to return, um, once again, it's going to return this matrix to us, right? This matrix of documents and topics, or in our case, songs and topics. Um, so I'm going to say topic values is equal to nmf.fittransform. I'm going to call it on TF-IDF. And we'll go ahead and run this. Ooh, and it's saying I'm missing a positional argument x. Do 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 do. Oh, and c. Okay, um, I just did capital NMF here, but my NMF object is lowercase NMF. So I'll run this now. And there we go. Runs awesome. Um, so before I go ahead and visualize this. Um, document topic matrix, we want to know what are the words that NMF chose to combine together for our topics. Um, and so this piece of code, I'm just going to write it out, copy it over, and then I'll explain it kind of line by line so we can get an idea of what's going on here. Um, and so you can take some time to also look at it. I'm going to also make sure to move it to the top of the screen so my head isn't blocking it. <laughs> um, and so let's take a look at this um, piece of code right here. What is this doing? So what this will do, just before we jump into it, this is going to show us what are the different words in our t individual topics. Um, so we're doing a for loop. Um, and what we're going to do is we can get the different um, components. The components are what we're pulling out of, of the NMF. Um, so we're going to loop through those NMF components, as we can see right here. Um, and I'm going to choose to enumerate. And this is a really helpful um, function in, um, in uh, Python that will let us get not only uh, the individual value in uh, what we're looping over, but it will also give us the um, index of that value. And since I also pasted this on over, I'm going to go ahead and also paste this into the chat. I think this will be um, helpful for you guys, uh, just because it's a bigger piece of code. Um, so you might need to go ahead and do some rearranging with, with returns, but I'm going to paste it in there for you. Um, oh, OK. It's a little, it's just over the maximum amount I'm able to send. So there we go. This should help you guys in following along. Um, and lastly, I'm going to add that print message into the chat. So you'll just want to add that onto the bottom. Um, OK, so once again, we are looping through the NMF components. And we're also grabbing that topic number. The topic number is going to be the index. Um, 
And what we're going to do is we're going to create a message. And the message is just going to be what these individual words are um, in our topics. Um, and what we're going to say is, in that message, write the topic number. And I have this bracket there, which is saying we're going to input the, um, some text uh, or a number in there. Um, and that's what the dot format will do. It's going to add that topic number plus one. So the index will start at 0, but we want our topics to start at 1. So it's going to say 0 plus 1. We'll start with topic 1 for our first topic. And then we'll loop through to our second topic, and it'll be topic 2. Our third topic will be topic 3, and so on. Um, and now we have the little more confusing part, which is um, creating what the actual words are in our topic. Um, and so what we can see here is we are using our vectorizer object. Once again, the vectorizer is um, that TF IDF vectorizer. And we're essentially saying for each of the topics, um, grab the index where our top um, 10 words are. That's why we have this 10 here. Um, and grab the, the word that represents that index. So this is essentially which words are going to be the top 10 words in that topic. Um, and we're going to go ahead and print that message out. Um, so I'm going to run this cell, um, and you'll see what we have here. And maybe this will help put everything into context of what's going on. Um, we see we have this first topic, topic number one. Um, and we have these 10 words here. These 10 words are the words that our NMF found to be in that individual topic. And then for topic two, we have the 10 words. Um, and then topic three, we have the 10 words. And I see someone is saying, I think we got nine words instead of 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, interesting, interesting. We have nine words. So if I go ahead and I make this minus 11 here, there we go. OK, so just um, if we make that minus 11 up there, then that will go ahead and be 10. Thank you for pointing that out, uh, Lolly Lollix. Uh, appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah, so what this helps us do is it helps us understand what is going on with our topics. What do they mean? Um, if our topics are made up of words that don't have some sort of co coherent understanding, um, then, uh, then, then our topic model isn't doing anything. Um, so this helps us understand what's going on. And we can see um, that um, there, there is uh, some kind of coherent understanding in our topics. Our first one is back, things, said, home, gone, come, things. So some of these words are useful. Um, I think home is a word that has a lot of meaning. Rain has a lot of meaning. Um, but some of these words have less meaning. Um, and these are words that maybe Taylor uses in her lyrics that, that they just don't provide a lot of context. Um, and these kinds of words that aren't adding context to our topics, we want to remove them. And since they're not adding context, we can also consider these stop words. Um, and when you're doing any sort of natural language processing analysis, in addition to the regular stop words um, that people often use, there might be um, some more specific stop words to your corpus that you'll want to remove um, out uh, so they're not clogging up uh, your analysis. Um, so in doing this, I kind of looked through these words and found things that I did not think were adding any sort of useful information. Um, and I put all of those words together in a list. Um, and so these are words that Taylor is using that I didn't think were adding any sort of value. Um, I'm going to add these to my stop words. Um, so I'm going to go back up here to where I defined stop words. Um, and I'm going to add a line. And I'm going to say stop words dot extend. And I'm going to add in this list of words that I just pasted in right here that I found Taylor uses that really don't, they don't add context. They're not helping us ex um, understand what she's talking about in her lyrics. And so I'm going to add these to our stop words. Um, ooh, and it says stop word is not defined. And that's because my list is called stop words. Keep forgetting these S's here. <laughs> um, so now I've added all of these words here to our stop words. Um, and what that's just going to help us do, it's going to help us remove those from our analysis so our topics will hopefully make more sense. There'll be words that are more interesting, 
words that more relate to Taylor's uh, lyrics. Um, uh, okay, um, so now that I've done that, I'm just going to run all these cells once again. So I'm going to rerun my vectorizer cell, rerun um, fitting and transforming that on my song lyrics. I'm going to um, rerun my NMF. Um, and then I'm going to rerun my uh, topics. Um, OK, the stop word list isn't showing in the chat. Yes, let me give that to you guys. That is a great, great point. Um, Here you go. Um, so yeah, you can just add that in uh, to your stop words, and that should help um, a lot with getting those better uh, topics. Um, OK. Now let's take a look at these topics. We can see they're starting to make some more sense. And here's one of the fun parts of topic modeling that we're going to get to do together. Um, we're going to come up with labels for our topics. Um, and so essentially, we're going to look at each of these six topics and come up with what we think we should name them. Um, this is not, nothing perfect. Um, this is an art, once again, not a science. Um, some of these topics might have more abstract meanings that we'll pull out. Um, some might have more definite meanings. Um, but I'm going to start thinking of some ideas. You guys at home as well, feel free to start putting into the chat what you think each topic should be. Um, labeled as. Um, uh, some of them are more obvious. Maybe like the, the top word, the most important word, which would be that first word, that might be the topic label we want to choose. Um, but maybe you look down the list and you see, oh, words come together to form some sort of idea. So feel free to write into the chat um, with any ideas that you have about which topic labels we can have. Um, so uh, getting some help from my colleague Alex. <laughs> Um, who thinks that topic three is definitely about breakups. Um, so we can name our third topic breakups. Um, I want to get some more volunteers. Come on, guys. You can be creative. Uh, um, any, anyone want to throw something out? Let's say for the first topic, love and beautiful. I think this one's about love. Um, even if you aren't a fan of Taylor Swift, a lot of her songs are about love. Um, and breakups. <laughs> So uh, we got a few topics there. Um, let's see. Any volunteers out there want to voice their opinions? Um, so I'll, I'm going to, I guess I'll fill some of them in myself. Um, so for topic two, um, remember, so she's thinking back. Um, uh, let's see. Um, um, she's saying never, never. Let's say, like, I'm going to say, um, like, her, um, like hearkening back, right? Hearkening, um, or or kind of um, reminiscing. I'll say reminiscing, um, reminiscing. Number four is party, baby time, sorry, night, bad, see, dancing, dancing. Yeah, I could see it. You know, um, memories. Memories is a is a a good way instead of reminiscing. Let's go with memories. Um, and then four, we'll do party. Um, so um, we have a good question from Hikari. A little confused about the topics. Are topics taken only from a single song? Um, so great question. Um, so the way that we came up with these topics is um, we use as our, our features, essentially, in this model, which are kind of the building blocks of how we came up with the topics, we use that TF-IDF, those term frequency, inverse document frequency. And what those um, scores did was they looked at how often a word appeared in an individual song, but they also looked at how often that word appeared um, in the overall catalog of music. And we gave that to um, the non-negative matrix factorization algorithm, the NMF. And it does its kind of wizardry behind the scenes to come up with these topics. So these topics are essentially ideas that appear um, as collections of words in certain songs, um, but not in other songs, but we see them appearing throughout the catalog. Um, so it's ideas that will appear repeatedly um, in someone's music, uh, but not in every single uh, song, perhaps. Um, so um, how can you determine their abstract meaning from multiple places? So we're essentially here, we're trying to find the meaning in, in someone's words. 
um, as, as, as humans, we comprehend this very, very automatically. It's something that we're, we're trained to do. We hear words, um, we hear the way someone talks, we have an understanding of, of what, what they're talking about. Um, but we're kind of approaching that same task, but now from an analytical viewpoint, um, where we're, we're saying, okay, how can we take um, you know, these counts of words, how can we take how often these words appear in the entire catalog and tie them to these conceptual ideas? Um, so once again, this is really an art, not a science. Um, and we're kind of uh, massaging the data um, and, and bringing our own um, personal insights to it as well. Um, so I got another recommendation. So great question, by the way. Um, we have another recommendation for topic five as um, homesick. Great. Um, and then, um, do we have any um, ideas for topic six? Um, girl got home um, forever. Um, so okay, I could see home. I know that's a little similar to homesick. Um, someone saying tired, perhaps. Um, um, forever trying independence. Oh, I like independence. Girl, you know. Um, um, I can see that. I can see that. Let's go. Let's go with independence. Um, and someone asked a good question, Mo. Does the case of the words matter? Um, so, when we're doing any sort of um, natural language processing, um, it is really useful to say, okay, we don't really want to care about the case usually. Um, maybe um, a word like run and running essentially have the same meaning, but they're kind of they're, they're spelled differently. Um, and so there's lots of pre-processing that we can do to text um, that will enable you to say, okay, um, let's chop off the endings of words or let's make everything lowercase. Um, and so what we're counting words that really have the same meaning as the same. Um, so yeah, Alex was uh, just wrote in the chat a little bit about that. NLTK, the Natural Language Toolkit, is really useful for that. And if you are interested in this, uh, my amazing colleague, Mario, uh, is working on a course all about this right now um, that will be going live in the near future. Get excited for it. I know she's super stoked about it, um, and you guys should be too. Um, OK, thank you all for the feedback. We now have all these topic labels, um, and um, we can use these now um, in order to tr um, track over, over time how these ideas of love, of breakups, of independence have changed. Um, so um, the other part of our NMF that we want to take a look at now are the actual scores for the topics. Um, and I think once we do this, everything is going to start to really come together for, for you all. So I'm going to make uh, a new data frame here. I'm going to call it uh, DF topics. Um, and I'm going to say it's equal to, and I'm going to create a new data frame. Um, and, um, and what I'm going to do, actually, before I do this, uh, let's go ahead and grab our topic values from our NMF. So I'm going to say topic values um, is equal to, um, oh, I did that above, above. Sorry, I'm getting a little lost. Um, also happens when you're coding a lot. Um, so I'm going to take the topic values that I defined up here, and I'm going to um, create a data frame out of that topic values. And let's run this cell, and I'll, let's display the data frame. Um, and we can see we have these uh, scores here um, in the data frame. Going down the columns, we have each of our songs all 94 of them. Um, and then across the top, we have our topics. Um, but I want to go ahead and change those column headers. Um, so I'm going to add in um, another argument to our um, creation of the data frame. I'm going to say columns is equal to topic labels. And what that will do is it will take those labels that we just came up with, and it'll add them into our data frame. Um, so now we can see. For each of the 94 songs, what score do we have for love, for memories, for breakups, and for our other three topics here? Um, and now that we have these scores, let's go ahead and add them back in uh, to our uh, data frame um, with the actual song lyrics and the song year. Um, so let's I'm gonna just minimize that for right now. 
um, and I'm going to say, um, I'm going to update our songs data frame to be equal to songs dot, um, uh, I believe it is mer join, sorry, I get mixed up between merge and join sometimes. Um, and we're going to join in our DF uh, topics. Um, and after we run that cell, let's look at our data frame. And I'm just going to do dot head this time. And we can now see that we have every single song. So we have ready for it as a song. We have all the lyrics. We have the year. This year will be really important for us in a few minutes when we start creating our graphs. Um, and then we have, excuse me, um, our topics and the scores for those topics. Um, so now that we have this um, awesome data frame with everything we need, um, there's just one more thing that um, we have to do before we can go ahead and plot our data. Um, and let's actually take a look at this once again. Um, we see these scores that we have, and we see some of the scores are um, pretty low. We have a 0.05 score, 0.09. We have a zero score. Here we have a 0.46 uh, for, for party. Um, so, if we're thinking about this one song, ready for it, and I hope my head is not blocking that. Um, I think we should be good now. Um, we'll, we understand that basically those first two topics, love and memories, they're not really in the song. They're just a little bit in the song, hanging out there. The song is mostly about partying, <laughs> according to our topic model, at least. Um, so what we want to do is we want to say, basically, if we have a, 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 a threshold score for a topic, Let's count this song as having that topic. If we don't meet a certain threshold score for that topic, we're going to say that song is not in that topic. Um, and one way we can easily do this is saying, OK, let's say our threshold is 0 0.1. I'm going to set that as kind of an arbitrary score. I want to look through our data frame and say, anytime any one of these scores is below 0.1, set it to 0. If it's above 0.1, set it to 1. And by setting it to 0, I'm saying that topic is not covered by that song. And if I set that score to 1, I'm saying that topic um, is covered in that song. And this will help us um, when we're trying to visualize over time how prevalent these topics are. Um, so what I'm going to say is I want to look in our songs data frame. Um, and since I want to be updating things, I'm going to use the dot lock method. Um, and this will just help us when finding things inside our data frame and updating them. We won't run into any errors. So I'm going to say songs.lock. And I want to find anywhere in songs um, where we have the topic um, love. So I'm going to start off with love. And I'm going to say where, where songs of love is greater than or equal to 0 0.1. So I'm saying find all the places in song where the love score is greater than or equal to 0 0.1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, in that same column, love, update that value to 1. Uh, so once again, what is going on here is, and I'm just going to move this up the screen a little bit, is we're saying in our songs data frame, find all um, the values for love. If it's greater than or equal to 0 0.1, um, set the score of love to 1. Um, and I'm just going to copy this line. And I'm going to do this five more times right here. But we're just going to change our, our columns here. So I'm going to say the same thing for memories. Memories. Um, I'll change breakups to breakups. I'll do party to party. Homesick to homesick. <laughs> and last but not least, uh, independence to independence. Independence, dependent. Um, and is everyone able to hear me? Any issues with the sound? Um, I think we should be OK. OK, good. OK. Um, should be good now. Awesome. Um, OK. Um, uh, 
So going back to updating the, um, the topics, so if I go ahead and run this cell, um, what this has done, and I'll go ahead and look at songs once again, um, is um, we can now see that anywhere um, where we were above that 0 0.1 threshold, we've um, changed that score to a 1. Um, so I'm going to do one more thing. I want to update now all the scores below this threshold to 0. So I'm just going to copy the same block of text that we just worked on um, and put it into cell right below. Uh, once again, to add a cell um, with the keyboard, just click that left-hand side and do type B um, to add a cell below. Um, and I'm just going to change all these greater than or equal to's to less than's. Um, and um, I'm going to change all of these ones to zeros. So we're saying if our score is below that 0 0.1 threshold, let's set the score to zero. And I'll run uh, songs.head again. Um, and we'll see now that we have zero um, in uh, um, our topic scores for anywhere where we were below that 0 0.1 threshold, and we have a 1 for anywhere where we were above that 0 0.1 threshold. Um, and Hakari is saying um, we could also use a for loop, like for i, or could we? Could we use a for loop for i and topics on the lock songs of i less than 0 0.1 i? Um, yeah. Um, well, so, so uh, um, uh, yes. Um, uh, you, you could do that. Um, I, w I don't see any issue. Uh, so that would uh, save some time there. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, great, great um, pointer. Um, OK, now that we have uh, these uh, basically indicators of whether or not a topic um, is in a certain song, um, we have to think about what kind of analysis do we want to do. So we have all of our songs, we have our topics, but, but what metric are we going to look at, at these topics? Um, th we chose to look at time. Um, how are these topics changing over time? Hopefully this will give us an idea of the artists, um, how have they progressed, um, how have they changed. Um, and so here we're going to take advantage of the year column that we have in our uh, data frame. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another group by. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to just say years, your, your topic. I'm going to name uh, this variable. And I'm going to say songs.group by. And I want to group by the year. And I'm just going to uh, add a dot sum to the end of my group by. So what I'm saying is go to the songs data frame, um, group everything by year. Um, and just for reference, um, you know, for most artists, they'll come out with maybe an album um, in an individual year. And so when we group by year, we're essentially saying combine all the songs on that album for an artist. Um, and so we're going to group by year, and I'm going to do this dot sum, which is an aggregate function that's saying sum all of the other columns. Um, and what this will do is it's going to sum how often a topic appears in a song for Taylor Swift in an individual year, or in every year. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. Year topics. Um, and so now we can see that we have the years going um, down on the left-hand side, um, and we have the topics along uh, the, uh, the top row, um, and we have these counts. And these counts represent how often um, in that individual year um, that topic appeared. So 2006, we had um, five songs about love, four about memories, three about breakups. Um, if we look at 2014, we really had a lot of songs about partying, according to our topic model, at least. Um, 2010, we had lots of songs about memories. Same thing for 2012. Oh, also about partying. Partying seems to be really prevalent. <laughs> um, so. Um, 
So right now we're seeing basically how these topics have changed over time, um, according to our analysis. Um, and once we have this uh, data frame, um, we can go ahead and do our um, plotting. Um, so one thing I forgot to do that I'm going to go back and do just to make it easier um, for us is reset the index on this group by. Um, and what this will do is it's just going to take that year, and instead of making um, it the index of our data frame, it's going to keep it as a column. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier for when we want to access that data um, when we're doing our plotting. Um, OK, um, now that we have uh, this year topics matrix, I'm going to go ahead and import matplotlib, uh, matplotlib pyplot and uh, matplotlib is the uh, most common uh, package for plotting in Python so we'll import that right here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a figure um, with a figure size ooh, no caps lock of 20 by 10 and this is basically saying we'll just create a space um, that um, is um, where we're going to do our plotting, and we're going to make it wider than it is tall, um, which will be useful for our plot. Um, fig size is not defined. Um, so plt.figure, fig size matplotlib.pyplot. Hmm, let's see, fig size, what is going on here? Oh, fig size equals. Forgot my equals sign. Um, and I'm actually going to do this in the same cell. I'm going to do all my plotting. So I'm going to say plt.plot. And we want to plot um, along um, the x-axis is going to be our years. So I'm going to say um, year topics of, of year. And then along the y-axis, I want to plot um, each of our um, each of our topics, how frequently that topic appears in that year. Um, so I'm going to say year topics. And I'm going to start off with doing um, love as our first topic we'll plot. Um, and then just in order for us to keep track of all of our different individual plots, I'm going to add um, a label. Um, and for the label, I'm going to do, remember we had our uh, labels up top, um, right here, topic labels. Um, I'm going to have each label be the individual name of that topic. So love, memories, breakups, party. Um, so I can either uh, index from that, um, from that uh, list. So I could say topic labels of zero. Um, or, and I'm thinking about this, it's probably even easier. Instead of doing that, I could just say love. Um, so instead of doing that, I'm just going to write love. I think that'll be clearer for everyone. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this line. And once again, I'm going to uh, paste it six times, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm just going to change each of these uh, to our different um, topics. So I'll change here to memories, change here to memories, change here to breakups, change here to breakups, change here to party. <laughs> Apparently, Taylor Swift really likes the party. <laughs> um, oh, change this to party. Um, change this to homesick. And last but not least, we'll change um, this last row to independence. Um, and right here on the bottom, since we added those labels, I'm going to say plt.legend. This will make sure that on our plot, we have a legend uh, showing uh, which line refers to which topic. And we'll go ahead and run this plot. And ta-da! We have our uh, chart of topics over time. Um, so we can see, based on our analysis, um, this idea of partying becoming pretty prevalent um, right from the start, um, peaking in 2008, teetering over time, maybe as Taylor's growing up. Um, Memories, memory seems to be pretty prevalent from her. Um, and we have like a peak in 2010, 2012 for her with her memories. Um, breakups, breakups 2010, there's a dip for some reason, but then continuing upwards. Um, and homesick, kind of 
Um, doesn't seem to be, uh, seems to be kind of flat uh, in the beginning, then goes down in 2014. Maybe she's more grown up now, um, not thinking about home as much. Um, so we can get some idea of what is going on in Taylor's life from here. Um, it might not be perfect. Um, we might be looking at this and saying, hey, this doesn't make sense uh, with, with what we know about this artist. Um, and that's why it's really important to have uh, domain knowledge, to have knowledge about the data that you're working with. If you're seeing that your topics aren't working out, it might make sense for you to go back, add some more soft words, see how those different topics um, arise, um, and seeing how your model comes out. Uh, the data science process in general is not often linear. It's a lot of doing something, going back, changing things, uh, iterating, iterating, and iterating. Um, but yeah, here we go. We have our topics over time. Um, and we've completed our analysis. Um, so just want to say thank you to everyone for joining us today on the live stream. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. And we went a little over time. I uh, apologize for that. Uh, but we want to see what you guys are able to do with your own data. If you're uh, finding some other artists out there um, and creating your own topic models, uh, send us anything that you come up with, any graphs that you make, that topics over time. Feel free to tweet them at us, uh, at Codecademy. Uh, we're happy to see them um, and see what you guys are able to do. Uh, if you're interested in this kind of uh, content, we're going to be having a whole natural language processing uh, curriculum coming out. So keep your eye out for that. It should be really awesome. Um, and also, um, we really appreciate all of your, your feedback that you guys have. Um, we're here to work with you guys, provide things that you enjoy, and hopefully teach you things. Um, so on the bottom of our YouTube description, we have a link to a uh, Google form where you could give us your feedback about the session. Let us know things that you liked, things that you didn't like, things you'd like to see more of. Um, so, so yeah, uh, that's it for today. Uh, my name is Ian once again. Thanks so much for taking the time to uh, be with us. Um, we are going to have this video uploaded to the blog post um, that is also linked to in the description. So you'll be able to rewatch this at your leisure anytime, share it with your friends, anyone who might like it. Um, and we'll also um, post uh, either on that YouTube link or um, on the blog post um, a link to completed code for you as well. Um, so yeah, if there's no questions or anything, thank you everyone for joining. Um, hope you had a good time. Um, we made it through without me having to sing any of the lyrics. Uh, I would consider that a success for, for everyone here today. <laughs> um, um, will there be written instructions of this entire video? Um, so we'll have the video posted um, and we'll have the code posted. Um, so that should be enough to, to kind of get you through um, completing this on your own. In addition, uh, I also wrote an article about this um, on our Codecademy blog, um, talking a little bit about my process for going through this. Um, and also did another uh, uh, kind of analysis on the same data set. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, we'll also link to that as well. And you can give that a read. Um, yeah, so uh, once again, thanks you everyone. Uh, please, please, please fill out that feedback form. It really, really helps us. Um, we really appreciate your feedback. Um, and um, yeah, thank you once again, everyone, also for uh, finding all my missing S's that I had. <laughs> um, OK, everyone, take care. Enjoy the rest of your day.